<sighs> Man, I love coffee. I got the small today. Um, let's talk about love and let's talk about a shamanic perspective on love. Um, my name is John Moore and I teach shamanism and I practice shamanism in the state of Maine. Um, I refer to myself as a shamanic practitioner and, or shamanic teacher. I don't call myself a shaman in my tradition. Uh, we don't do that. Um, so just so you know, that's what's, that's what's going on. Um, but I wanted to talk about love. And as I record this, uh, we are smack dab in the middle, sort of towards the tail end of um, Pride Month. And somebody I love and care about um, uh, reminded me that I had not done uh, a social media post for Pride this year. And they were absolutely right. And um, I want to I want to do that. I did um, I did a video on Instagram, and I will I'll, I'll put this will get posted everywhere as well. Um, but I want to talk about love, and I want to talk about diversity, and I want to talk about inclusion, and I want to talk about uh, divine love or love being divine, and hatred kind of being the opposite of that. So let's get into it. Let's talk about it a little bit. Now, the word love in English is a bit complicated because it, we use it with a very, like a very broad brush <laughs> painting something. And there's no intricacy to, the, to that word, really. Um, I'll give you an example. I love my coffee. I love this mug that I'm drinking out of. I love my children. I love my girlfriend. Those are different things. They really are. They're really the, you know, um, they're really big differences between what those mean to me. So love is sort of complicated and we use it to mean I really like this. We use this to be to mean I am romantically in love with you. And we use this to mean I love my friends and family. I'm close to them. I feel a bond. I feel a kinship. Um, my understanding is there's something like 85 different words for love in Persian. And there, in some other languages, there are many, many words for love. Um, but we've got love. You know, we can say, I adore you. I love you. I, uh, I don't know. I bequeath my heart to you if you want to get poetic um but let's talk about love love as a as a divine thing and when i say divine i'm talking about divinity what you might call god or source or the universe or brahma or if you don't believe in spirit um you might call it the natural order of things and so um, love, one of the takes on love that I really like, that the definition of love is complete and full acceptance. So if I say I love you, it means I completely and fully accept you. I accept you not in spite of who you are, not um, I love parts of you, but not other. I fully accept who you are. And I'm here to tell you that that's hard. As a human being, that is hard. We have preferences, we have our culture, we have our prejudices. We all have prejudices. Everybody has implicit bias. Even if you are uh, the strongest social justice warrior, the least prejudiced person you can think of, experiments have proven out time and time again that all human beings have implicit biases. Implicit means we're not aware of them. I'm not saying you are a racist or a bigot or whatever. I'm saying you have implicit biases. We all do. It's part of our conditioning. Um, and becoming aware of it is important. Uh, it's important for our development to say, you know what? I had this reaction to this person, and that's coming from an implicit bias. Um, so complete and full acceptance. When I say I love you, it means I love you with your flaws, with your bad behaviors, with, you know, your bad behaviors, um, judging your behaviors. 
it's hard to do that. And we can instantly think of human beings who have done horrific things. Say, how could we love this person? How could we love Charles Manson or Hitler or, you know, one of the school shooters or, you know, um, whatever. And, and yeah, I mean, that is, that's challenging as a human being. It really is. Um, and it is hard to find, it is hard to get into that state of love for those people. And I, I am not claiming that I'm perfect and can, can instantly do that. But can I feel a sense of compassion for them? Yeah, I, I absolutely, I feel compassion for everybody. So, you know, one example I've talked about before is um, Charles Manson, who did some horrific things. He was responsible for a bunch of murders and, um, uh, you know, those, you know, he, he wound up in prison where he belonged. But um, when you look at his upbringing as a child, and this isn't an, an excuse at all. This is not an excuse for what he did. He was in control of his faculties and he chose to do what he did. But when you look at his childhood, that his mother was a prostitute and he lived in a brothel with her and then was in and out of the system and got no education and um, just the worst, po you know, not the worst maybe, but really, really horrific living circumstances with no ethical or moral compass with no love given to him. Can I feel compassion for that? Yeah, yeah. And, and I can also feel like a lot of that is responsible for the choices he or, or you know, influence the choices that he made. He's still responsible for his choices. But would he have made different choices? Had he been raised in a loving home? Um, Probably, you know, I don't know for sure, but I can feel compassion for that. Um, so love is kind of this, I don't, you know, again, divine love is this full and complete acceptance. This is on one end of a spectrum. On the opposite end of the, the spectrum, we'll say that that's hate, hatred, right? Hatred is, you know, as we move towards this love end of the spectrum, we are moving towards divinity, and I'll explain that in a minute. We're moving towards divinity, we're moving towards God, we're moving towards source. And every major spiritual system teaches this, whether or not it is taught in individual churches, mosques, temples, etc. Underneath the dogma, the doctrine, the pomp and circumstance is a message about love coming from source okay and i will if you don't believe in spirit if you're an, a material atheist it's fine i love and accept you um i will talk about how you can potentially reconcile that as well in a moment um but on the other end of the scale is hatred and this is obviously a complete rejection of somebody and usually because of some characteristic usually because of uh, the color of their skin or their nationality or the language that they speak or their gender identity or their sexuality. Um, we, we reject and hate that person just because of who we perceive them to be. And that is about as far away from divinity as we can get. So hateful actions, hateful actions like murder, like genocide, like um, rape and robbery and everything that that is hateful. And when you victimize other people, that is an act of hatred because in order for me to victimize somebody, I have to perceive of them as unworthy of human compassion and love, right? Even if I just steal something from somebody, even if I... Um, uh, you know, put somebody down or, or, you know, that is, again, it's on that scale of divinity to the opposite of divinity. Um, my grandmother, uh, my grandmother, who is about to turn 106 in August, um, bless her, uh, real matriarch, born in 1916 in uh, Bath, Maine. And, um, you know, lived in a time really that was you know there was a town there 
but where she lived was really kind of still a frontier. No running water, electricity, um, anything. They had heated their home with a wood stove on which they also cooked, on which they also heated water for their once a week bath, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. All the kids in her family had two sets of clothes, one for church and school and one for everything else. You know, uh, I'm starting to talk like, you know, when I was a kid. Um, what a change in the world that she has seen, right? I mean, um, we have computers and space travel now, and she didn't have electricity, running water, or a telephone. Um, so regardless, uh, my grandmother is a, uh, is a religious person, very spiritual person, uh, very uh, deep, deeply involved in her church when she was younger and um, served as a reader in her church and taught Sunday school and all kinds of stuff. Um, she uh, one time was talking to me when I was young, and I, this stuck with me. Uh, she was talking, somebody had asked her about heaven and hell. What were her concepts of heaven and hell? And what she said, and this is interesting coming from somebody who is um, Christian um, and not bashing Christians at all, um, but just an interesting viewpoint from that perspective, is that she said, when I am being loving towards people, when I am being kind towards people, when I'm being charitable towards people, I am in heaven right here on earth right now. I'm in heaven. I feel like I'm in heaven. When I am angry or unkind or, um, you know, what she's talking about is hatred. When I, I don't think she used that word. Um, when I am being angry, hateful, spiteful, whatever. I think they, this is an old use of this term, when I get ugly with people. Um, I don't know if I don't know if that's just a main thing or an old term, but getting ugly with somebody means like being really angry. Um, then I am in hell. And that's right here on earth, right? I can experience that right now. So again, that's that movement towards connection with divine source or movement away from divine source. So let's say you don't believe in spirit. It's totally fine. You don't, you don't have to. <laughs> it's okay. Um, it's okay with me. Um, I fully love and accept you. Um, what we should talk about then is the natural order of things. And if we look around, if I look at myself sitting in my tiny little town, in my tiny little state, in my medium to large country, on this tiny little planet, in a backwards solar system that's a speck of dust in this huge galaxy, and that galaxy is a speck of dust amongst billions of galaxies in a universe in which there may be infinite alternate universes. What I look, what I see is that the natural order of things is diversity. So if you believe in a creator spirit, God or source or Brahma or, uh, you know, whatever pagan beliefs you have about the creation of the universe, you have to see, just look around you, and you have to see that, you know, we live on a planet with, uh, you know, thousands, tens of thousands of species of fungus and beetles and fish. And look at how different human beings are, just physically, right? Short people, tall people. I was born with physical, uh, quote unquote, disabilities. I was born with birth defects. I'm different than most other people. Um, I don't have as many bones as you do, probably. Um, so there, is, you know, so there's uh, there's huge amount of diversity. The the color of our skin, eyes, and hair varies widely, even within my family. My brother is uh, my brother. Um, were, you know, when we were kids, was platinum blonde. I mean, look at my hair. Um, I was, I was blonde for the first two years of my life and then my hair turned dark, but um, my brother's now sandy brown, but he, his hair is lighter than mine. My parents both have brown eyes. I have blue eyes and so does my brother. My grandfathers both had blue eyes, but my grandmothers did not. So 
even within families, there's a huge amount of just physical diversity. Then we look at how many languages there are in this planet. How many religions are there in this planet? How many, I don't know, culture is a really hard thing to put our thumb on. But if we had to sort of separate out cultures, however academics do that, how many different cultures are there? I can tell you that where I live, you know, I live in um, I live in a small town that is kind of a commuter commuter community for a larger city, but um, there's a lot of farm near me. Um, but the the vibe here is very different than I I drive an hour up to the coast. Even the accent that people speak with, I'm doing my best not to affect a main accent. <laughs> um, they sound like Tom Bosley in Murder, She Wrote, if you remember that one. Um, I'm trying not to affect a main accent, but the accents are different. So there's so much diversity, even everywhere you look. So diversity is the natural order of things. And if you believe in God, if you believe in a creator and you believe in source, God created this diversity. We should celebrate that, right? We should celebrate this diversity. Now, a lot of people will use their, um, use their doctrine and use their dogma to reject people that are different than them. And I will argue that that is a false teaching. Anything that teaches rejection and hatred, that is, that is farther away from that divinity scale. We're not approaching... Um, godliness at that point, which is what we should be doing. I can tell you that um, I have, uh, you know, part a big part of shamanism is working with spirits, working with um, uh, deceased people sometimes to help them cross over if they're if they're stuck here. Um, I have done work with murderers. Um, somebody, you know, somebody was who was in uh, organized crime and um, died and uh, was kind of sticking around and plaguing, um, plaguing some descendants. And um, there, there still was a purity in that spirit, although they had in life done, um, you know, done some terrible things. Their connection to divinity was not severed. You can't, you can't sever that or you cease to exist. And I don't just mean you die. I mean, nothing exists if there's no, if that spark of divinity is gone, uh, so are you. But, but the good news is it can't be gone. It can't be cut off. It doesn't ever get extinguished. This is a part of you that is undying, unborn, and unaffected by anything you do in your life. That goes from life to life to life. Um, and even though, you know, uh, you know, this one case when I was working with this person who had um, killed some people, um, the spirit didn't move on because he was worried about, he was religious and um, was worried about going to hell. And uh, in, in my experience and all my years as a shamanic practitioner of doing what we call psychopomp work, which is helping, uh, the deceased cross over essentially. Um, I have never experienced a hell. I've never experienced anybody going to a hell. I've not experienced it myself or known spirits to come back and say, oh, there was a hell. Um, I do, you know, I have heard stories of people who had near death experiences and had sort of uh, demonic experiences or, you know, what they call demonic experiences. That really is shaped by our expectation and our culture and our beliefs. Um, people who are uh, entrenched in Christianity, for example, who are born, born and raised and practice Christianity, um, their experience of the afterlife is very much shaped by that. Well, people who are Hindu their experience of the afterlife is very much shaped like that. And as somebody who practices shamanism, I have experienced the afterlife. Um, it's very, very individual uh, for, for people. It's a hard thing to grasp because we like to think of it as a place, 
that we're going to. I'm going to heaven. I'm going up in the sky and there's this, I'm going to hang out in the clouds and there's going to be, everybody's going to be in white dresses and have wings and, a, you know, a gold halo. Um, it, maybe, maybe that'll be like that for you. Um, wasn't like that for me uh, when I crossed over and um, it was a big party. Someday I'll talk about, I'll talk more in depth about um, my experience of the other side. Um, and I didn't want to come back. I'll tell you that. Um, it was, you know, every ache, pain and worry that you have ever had goes away. And so what happens with spirits is all of the trauma, all of the stuff that people might have gone through, um, on earth, a lot, well, not all of it, not always, a lot of it gets stripped away and spirits can go to what we call spirit school. It's an earthly term for, for a, a process that souls go through. Um, and, you know, so, sort of realize the folly of the minor dramas that they went through here on earth that m might have seen major, major at the time they were here. So, I want to wrap up. I've been talking for a while, but my point is this, that we have a choice of where we can be on the scale of love to hatred. And if you want to be in hell all the time, you will be on this side of that scale. And if you want to be in heaven all the time, you will be on this side of the scale. And yes, as human beings, it's hard to stay over here all the time right? I understand that. I am no different than you. Um, it's hard when somebody does something horrible to me. It's hard for me to be here, to be on the loving divine side. But I make an effort and so can you, and you can make choices, you make choices about accepting people. So um, as this is a pride month, uh, you know, this video is being recorded in pride month and I um, on behalf of somebody I love and care about very deeply, um, I want to encourage people to, and, and this is part of my personal mission, and if more people would do this, um, it would change our culture in significant positive ways. Do whatever you can to allow people to be safe, to feel safe, being who they are with you. Um, this doesn't mean, you know, force people to reveal secret information to you or whatever. That means holding sacred space for the diversity of people in your life. Understand that you have implicit bias. We all do. We're all human. I am not differentiating myself here at all. We are we are more the same than we are different. Um, but this is something I've thought about, and this is something that is part of my personal mission, is to provide a space, when you are with me, to provide a space free of judgment, to be, to be who you are, as long as the only caveat I have, as long as you are not hurting others, that I would put a stop to that. I would do what I can to, um, that behavior. But apart from that, really, I want you to be yourself around me. I want you to feel comfortable being who you are and know that you are loved and know that you are worthy of love. And just by virtue of being human, you deserve more love, not less. So I'm going to wrap up for now. Uh, please subscribe to my channel. I've got uh, tons and tons of videos um, and uh, always working on something new. And uh, I will talk to you real soon. Yeah.